Hello friends, Tanya here with another video for Spellbinders and this time I'm going to be using the Everyday Occasion Floral Alphabet and Copper Plate uh, sentiments. These are just stunning. These came out in March. The Everyday Floral Alphabet came out in um, February. This is, the, this is the Copper Plate Thinking of You and I'm going to do some pressing without ink on this black watercolor cardstock. It's cut to five by seven inches and I'm just going to move this, actually I think it's cut to just under five by seven inches, like four and a half by six and a half inches. You can see that it presses very deeply into this rather thick black watercolor cardstock. It doesn't watercolor very easily. This came in a kit and this is a great way to use this cardstock. So I'm just kind of keeping track of where the plate is before I slide it to its next position. I'm kind of staggering it and um, creating a impressed background with the thinking of you plate. You can um, use ink on this and letter press with it and you can foil with this plate also. And I have a feeling I'm going to be using these copper plate uh, sentiments a lot. They're just so beautiful and they're big. I love a big sentiment. The only thing better would be if there was a coordinating die, but you know. Next we're going to use the Every Occasion Floral W here. I've got W, I've got the D, and I'm going to use that in this video also. We've got the B that says best wishes. S is sending love. Z is a zillion thanks. The W is with synth sympathy and the D is delivering happiness. We're going to start with the W because this is going to be a sympathy card and the sympathy part of this particular uh, set is separate and you can see how it slides right up underneath that W if you wanted to do this all together. I end up doing this, um, I didn't use the little sentiment portion of this foil on this foil I used um, satin foiling or satin, satin foil when I foiled this we're also going to use the with sympathy from the um, you are everything better press now I'm taking the champagne gold foil here and I'm going to foil it on some glossy black cardstock. This is, um, I think it's about a six by four and a quarter inch piece of glossy cardstock to fit that entire panel. Look at that. And then there is one die that cuts all of these sentiments. So you foil or press all of them at once and then you die cut all of them at once. Now you got to be extra careful with the glossy cardstock because if you don't tape it properly it will slide and then your uh, sentiments won't be centered properly. I have all of these sentiments that I can pick to choose from but we're going to use the with sympathy. And you can see mine is off just a little bit. I did end up foiling it again. I'm doing some partial foiling here. I just took a scrap of that glossy cardstock, covered the area I wanted, sandwiching the foil in between. And here I have a much uh, a second with sympathy and then I'll line that up with the coordinating die. So this shows that you can do just one. If you don't want to do all of them, you can do just one of the sentiments. It's not difficult. And then I have a backer for that all built in because I don't want to use that off-centered um, die cut piece. So I don't want to waste it and it, I needed an extra piece to glue behind it anyway. So I have our sentiment all lined up for this card. Look at that. I really like how the foiling on glossy cardstock looks. So I have my foiled W. This did not foil perfectly, but that's okay. I'm, I'm okay with the distressed look. I could have tried it again, um, but I decided to just stick with this one. It has, uh, I think it goes with the sympathy sentiment. I'm using Copic markers to color in all of these flowers. And I did foil this on an A2 sized panel. I am starting with a slightly darker yellow and I'll come back with a lighter yellow to fill in the rest of the flowers. You could do this on watercolor paper and watercolor these. Um, you could better press this 
I don't know, I haven't tried foiling on watercolor paper, but since foiling works best on smooth paper, I don't know that I would try it. Next, I have my lighter yellow. We're just going to add that and blend that in a little bit. It's very easy to Copic color a foiled image. Foiling and um, wet heat set embossing are great ways to add some pizzazz to your images, which, which must be why I'm very drawn to glimmering. This is a really beautiful image when you've colored it. It really makes it a wow factor. It makes it look, look delicate and um, I wouldn't say whimsical, but romantic maybe. Is that the look I'm or the the term I'm looking for? This whole image took me probably I don't know five minutes to color. It didn't take very long to color this. And it's very relaxing. I really enjoy coloring. I have sped this up to twice the speed. And um, I created this card in the beginning of March, but wasn't ever able to finish the editing and the voiceover. And it really made me think I need to create more sympathy cards. It's the kind of card that you want to have on hand because when you need it, you don't feel like creating them. You just want to pull them out and be all ready. So I think I'm going to try to build my stash of sympathy cards. When I was selling them at work, it was one of the first kind of cards to uh, go the, f the fastest because it isn't something you tend to be able to anticipate. It was a last minute kind of need thing. I'm adding some green to those little tiny leaves. There was a second style of leaf, leaf or flower that I decided to color as a flower in a pink, a couple of pink tones. And I'm just using one green tone. I think that turned out beautiful. So I'm going to take our uh, pressed uh, embossed or debossed panel that I um, have cut down to four and a half. I think it's four and a half by six and a half. Let me look at it. Nope, it's four and three quarters by six and three quarters. So this is a very thin mat. And I'm adhering it to a black card base. Um, this is a five by seven card. And I'm also going to add a white insert on the inside of the card. This is also cut to four and three quarters by six and three quarter inches. And before I started this part, I took this over to my brother Scan and Cut, because again, there is not a coordinating die for this, and uh, cut out the W. And I had colored, I'd foiled and colored and cut a second one of these Ws before I started assembling the card. We'll glue this one to the inside. Sometimes when I have the plan put together, I do the inside first, which kind of makes sense. Then you aren't flipping over any fresh glue on the front of the card to work on the inside of the card. I'm using a second sentiment from that uh, set. This is the, this says, I am so sorry. And the front is going to say with sympathy. Now, when I was uh, cutting this out with the brother scan and cut, I did cut a second piece of scrap card stock to add to the W that's going on the front of the card. Just going to line that up and get all of those edges even with each other. That acts, adds some extra stability and a little bit of dimension and in a really fast way. If you're trying to do that with little pieces of dimensional foam, it can take a whole lot more time than just taking a die cut or in this case, scan and cut uh, repeat and gluing it to the back. So we'll glue that to the center of this card. And this is going to be a fairly clean and simple card front. And I think that sympathy cards often have a very good impact if they are clean and simple. I'm going to add the with sympathy over the top of the W. Getting that as straight as I can and using my heavyweight block to help that adhere. That is card number one. I really like how this turned out. 
Next, I am going to use the Peony ba Background Press Plate, and this is the Tiger Better Press Ink. This is from the Tropical Collection, and it is a very lovely orange color. It would be kind of a muted orange for a tiger, but I really like it. I am inking up this entire plate. I have a five by seven piece of cardstock that I'm going to um, press with this background. I'm going to make a five by seven background. Here I'm showing you the packaging. I don't know why I didn't put that before the pressing. <laughs> Sometimes my editing skills, I don't know. <laughs> I ran that through the platinum and now I'm going to ink this up again, kind of keeping an eye on where the ink had been picked up so I don't have to ink as much of the plate. Just carefully doing my tap, tap, tap with a little bit of twist. You don't wanna rub it over the plate, not because of the inking, but it kind of makes your felt pad start to fray. I'm Kate looking at this sideways to see where this is gonna land on our cardstock to make sure it's gonna land in the right spot. And look at that, a beautiful five by seven um, panel. Next, I'm going to take the Fluted Classics dies here. It um, The fluting just cuts little pattern into the cardstock, and there is a die that I taped to it to create the outer rectangle. This is the Everyday Floral, this is the D, and this is the one that says Delivering Happiness. So I'm lining this on my uh, platen, kind of centering it on this piece of Oh, let me look at the cardstock. I can't remember. Is it watercolor? Yes, it's watercolor cardstock, and I'm using some gold pigment ink to um, press this into the watercolor cardstock. Going to run that through the plat uh, the platinum, and I don't have a platinum six. I have the big size platinum, and if you can afford to get that, I would go right to it. I did use the Brother Scan and Cut to cut that out also. And now I'm going to use the Delivering Happiness portion. I'm showing you how that just tucks right into the D. I'm figuring out where I want that to be on this orange rectangle that I have uh, die cut with the inner portion. So there were dies that cut the outside of this fluted classic rectangle. And there's another one that cuts the inside to add a layering panel or to make that a frame. I cut this orange cardstock with that, and I think it's actually Peach Parfait, an old um, Stampin' Up color, which is a muted orange. And um, I lined up the D, and then I figure out where that uh, needs to be according to the grid, and I lay that down on my platen. That's just um, a very loose <laughs> way to figure that out. And then I'm going to make sure I center this up nicely in the middle of the chase. We'll tape that down with some best ever craft tape. I'm trying to make sure I don't put any tape where I might need to have some of that pressing done. I'll ink that up with the gold pigment ink, the same ink I used on the letter. And look at that, it came out perfectly and I just missed that tape. <laughs> Sometimes I forget to reverse the position that the uh, pressing is going to be in. And look at that. That snugs right in there beautifully. Then I took the Sakura, Sakura Koi watercolors, and I'm watercoloring all of these different flowers. And I'm using two or three different colors to do the watercoloring of the flowers. And, um, yeah, it is at least three different colors. I did some mixing of the colors on the palette also. It's very easy to watercolor. Actually, I think this went faster to watercolor than it did to do the Copic coloring. Part of this time was just mixing the greens that I wanted. Don't forget that if you have a watercolor palette, you are not limited to the colors that are in each little pot. You can mix endless numbers of colors with watercolors. It's very easy to mix, mix small batches of custom colors. Don't be afraid to play with color when it comes to your watercolors. It is so easy and so fun to add different um, tweaks to the colors that you're using. Next, I'm going to do a little bit of ink blending behind the D. I just want to add a little um, 
interest to this panel. I think it was a little too flat for it to, um, without a little bit of ink blending. This is Clementine ink from Concord 9th and I'm just using a blending brush to ink that on there. And it's a light color, so it took several layers. Just lining that back up and making sure that I have enough blending here. Next, I'm taking some uh, gold metallic uh, watercolors. These are Daniel Smith metallic watercolors. Whatever you have to use for this would work great. There are lots of different ways to create some metallic gold. Next, I'm taking the same watercolor paint and I'm adding little dots to the centers of each of these flowers. And I think that really makes a difference on this design. It really pops and adds some extra detail to these flowers. I think ultimately I skipped a flower on here and I'm still looking at it going, I should go back and paint the center onto that flower. Would anyone notice but me? I don't know. What do you think? I love how that turned out. Mm-hmm. Yep. I did use my brother's scan and cut. I already mentioned that. Sorry, repeating myself. We're using Wicked Elixir, Distress Mica Stain, and some green cardstock. And I spritzed that so I could use the Everyday Foliage die from the Tulip Collection from Simon Hurley that came out in March. And I am going to cut out both of these branches. I think I cut two or three of each of them. Nope, just one of each. And I'm going to trim one of these down so I have a couple of pieces to work with. And I'm going to figure out some placement here. I just want some greenery sticking out from behind the uh, D. And yep, you can see the Asian lady beetles are definitely out in force. They have really been liking my crafting desk. Um, just think of it as your, your cat or your dog trying to get in on the action. <laughs> um, next, we're going to use the Copper Plate Happy Birthday. I have used this already several times. I am really loving these plates. They're very versatile and they're a low price point. So if you are looking for some versatile uh, large sentiments, I would look at these copper plates. There are six of them and I have three of them. I think I might break down and get the other three. We're going to use the Fluted Classics uh, rectangles again. We're going to use this, uh, the bigger size. We use the me medium sized one uh, for the front and this is going on the inside of the card. I don't like to better press directly on a card base but I sure like the look of it. So we're going to glue this inside the card. This is going to be a landscape card versus a portrait card. And then I'm going to put an extra, the the misty over that to add some extra weight to help that stick really well because that's watercolor cardstock on the inside of the card. We have a little extra cardstock on the back of this uh, tiger peony background, better pressed uh, panel, which is four and a half by six and a half inches. Then we have our, I used brushed white cardstock to got, die cut this matted fluted rectangle panel. We've got that centered with an extra piece of cardstock on the back. And then our orange panel, which I also have another piece of cardstock, uh, scrap cardstock on the back of that to elevate that just a smidge. More extra cardstock on the back of our D, and we'll just line that up with the delivering happiness portion of that sentiment. Then it's time to tuck in these greens that we um, messed with earlier that I die cut and tried to get the placement figured out on. We'll see if I put it back in the same fashion that I had it earlier. Sometimes I change my mind or I totally forget what I had done previously, but I do have a loose plan of how I want this to go on. I just wanna make sure that these um, are not gonna be floppy on the card and that they don't overhang the edge because I think they will, um, get in the way of the envelope and they will be easily damaged if they're hanging over the edge. I did tear the end off of the stem. Don't be afraid to cut your die cuts apart to make them suit your needs. They are definitely just another ex, uh, tool in your, your uh, tool belt. That is, the that is all of the cards that I created this time. 
They were definitely fun to put together using different techniques and methods to create cards, and I love to experiment with them. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't done that. Check the description box below for all of the products that I used today, and leave me a comment. Let me know what you loved about this video. Until next time, here are a couple more videos I thought you might enjoy. Bye-bye.